on the road looking for a major win. This go a long way with this field position. One and five on the road so far this season. First down for the 40. Crofton swings it out. And here's Deron Carter off and running, leaping across the 30-yard line for an Alouette first down. Yeah, this is a no-brainer. This is just numbers. And this is a good play call. You get what you want. And you get the ball in the playmaker's hands. Watch this. You've only got one, two, and then the third player has got this guy. And just give it to him. Watch where he's got to come from. He is 23 yards away from Deron Carter. He can't make a play. He's still running away. Jermaine Gabriel was in coverage deep, and that was a well-designed play. Taking advantage, that's a formation. Now Crompton on the play fake throws incomplete. Uh, he aimed it. S.J. Green was trying to tight rope the sideline, but the pass was too high. He aimed it. I can see it, Jonathan. Get your hips towards your target and pull the trigger. He aimed it. Jonathan's going to roll out. His receiver's wide open. He throws across his body, doesn't get his hips to his target. And instead of just throwing the football and trusting your instincts and what you've done a gazillion times before, he tries to aim it and falls off target. Anthony Calvillo was a stoic quarterback. Jonathan Crompton is not. I love the way he plays, though, boy. He's a gunslinger. And firing, and the pass... Oh, this is going to be tight. Incomplete for Deron Carter, who thought he had the catch, but yeah, not, a, not a lot of... It'll be third down for the Alouettes, and the field goal unit will come on. Uh, this is tight coverage. Oh, he should have had the ball up there a little bit because he had Agnew beat. That was just a poor throwing ball. 37-yard field goal try for Sean White who is now 15 for his last 15 over the last six games. Saw a couple go out the goalpost last night in the Ottawa yeah. Hamilton game. And White puts that one up and through, and the Alouettes pad their lead. Now up by seven with nine to go in the third quarter. So the Alouettes and Argos trying to pry this thing open. 13-6 the score on the CFL on TSN from Toronto. It was a 1-7 and seven start for the Montreal Alouettes, but a much better middle of the season. Matthew Chidetti has more. Absolutely, Gore. When we spoke to Bear Woods about that 1-7 and seven start, he said his defense was a defense that gave away late points because they gave away late drives in the fourth quarter despite playing well for the first three quarters. And in week nine, after a loss to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, the defense and the veterans got together, looked at lots of film with lots of mistakes, and all came to the, un the understanding, as John Bolden almost to also told us, if you're not willing to accept the complete complaints and the arguments from other your teammates and the corrections then you're really not ready to play football now this team as we've already discussed has only given up seven points in the last three games and now with this game included has forced 13 turnovers in the last four weeks and there's Guys. bear woods who picks up the loose ball the catch was made by anthony woodson and woods has it now the question is was woodson down by contact before woods picked up the ball i didn't hear a whistle there was no whistle on the play and Woods is staring at the scoreboard. And I was saying second down. The ruling on the field is down by contact. It'll be Toronto's ball, second down. So now, Tom Higgins can challenge if he likes. Let's have a look. This is our first look at it. Was well played, confused Ricky Ray, yeah, held down. onto the football. He's down. Good call. But excellent defense by Montreal once again, forcing Ricky Ray to be a little unsure about things down there. Game was a yard. Here comes the rush. Ray under pressure, and his arm hit. Comes loose. Again, there's no whistle. Picked up by the fullback, Xander Robinson. After Ricky Ray got hit by Montreal's Nicolas Boulay, and that'll be the fifth straight two and out for the Toronto Argonauts going back to the first half. Well, Nicholas Boulay, this is just beautiful defense. Uh, you're going to watch another stunt here, and Boulay's going to come around the outside. Bowman's going to go inside. They're going to change responsibilities. And then, I tell you, I'm enjoying watching Noel Thorpe defensively go at it with Scott Milanovic and Marcus Brady offensively for Toronto. So far, Montreal's got the upper hand. Confusing the veteran quarterback, Ricky Ray. 
Waters sends that down to the 40-yard line and fielded in the air by James Rogers. who got hit right away. But that's going to be a no-yards call against the Toronto. And that'll move the ball into Toronto territory, a 15-yard no penalty. Toronto number 36. 15-yard penalty. Yeah. First down. I, I don't know if that's a big enough penalty for that, Gord. 15 yards for almost ending a guy's season or maybe possibly career hitting him low like that. That's tough to watch. Jonathan Croft has been great to watch this afternoon and the last month or so as number 18 is now number one for the Alouette. Here is the sack tally brought to you by Pure Later, tackling hunger across Canada. Check. While Montreal has the only sack of the football game, John Bowman with his 10th of the year. Toronto has 38 on the season. Next food drive is November 2nd in Montreal. So with the penalty, the Alouettes start once again on the Argo side of midfield at the Toronto 53-yard line. And here's Terrell Sutton with the carry. And he gets down to the 50-yard line. These teams will face each other one more time, November the 2nd, in Montreal. Right now, the Argonauts have the edge in the tiebreaker, having won the first meeting of the season. But you got to think with the closeness in the East, the tiebreak is going to matter. Scott Milanovic, by the way, saying that last week was a must win against Hamilton because the Ticats would have held the tiebreak on the season had they won that game. He said this game is not a must win. Yeah, and I... Uh, uh, I, know, I guess because they beat Montreal first time around and still up in the air, but I would Austin think it would be. Fires, Deron Carter makes the catch, runs backwards, and it'll <laughs> be close to a first down now. He had it by five. Now it might need a measurement. I love your voice inflection. Runs backwards. He's like, yeah, he did. And he caught it the second time. But this is what happens when the quarterback, he established the line of scrimmage first and ten, and then you give the quarterback an opportunity for vision and throw through clear lanes and one-on-one. -on -one. Carter just runs away from Agnew. Now I believe that was Matt Black. If I, I'll have to go back and check that. Finally, they're going after that matchup. Now the play fake, Crumpton's under pressure. Gets the ball back, but that's a train wreck started by Toronto defensive lineman, Tristan Opalugo. Yeah, it's all kinds of stuff going on defensively for Toronto right now, but this is huge for them. Coming right off the edge, unblocked. Opalago. Pretty easy. Just make the tackle, and he does. Oh, my goodness. And that's his 10th sack of the season, and so the Alouettes now are pushed back to midfield. And it's going to be second and 23. The playbook gets pretty thin at distances like this. Profit under pressure, throws, and Matt Rainey Black. gets buried by Matt Black, who makes the tackle of the play, and the LOS will have to punt. And Matt Black, he, we, we saw him in spot duty playing field side corner in the first half. Now he's taking over for Agnew on the boundary corner, and he comes up and makes a nice play right here. Reads it, it's a quick hit screen, comes out, gets in front of the block, makes a sure tackle and open flag. His Experience showing through there, showing he can play field side, short side, and free. The more you can do in the CFL, the better off you're going to be. Now Owen stands inside his 10 yard line. Sean White had a great punt last time, pinched him in at the three, and now Owens watched it again go out of bounds inside the 10. The Alouettes are winning the field position battle decisively. Sean White with a 47 yard punt. There's no return this time. It goes out of bounds at the four. And Sean White once again being congratulated on the Alouette sidelines as this battle is tilting in one direction. Is that I go? Hey, Star Star Rush in and Charleston yeah. Hughes. He yeah. hadn't been around. Uh, it's just like they keep rolling them out there. So here in Toronto, the entire second half has been played on the Argo side of the field, and yet the Alouettes have but three points to show for it. Yeah, I mean, that's, and you can't, don't keep Ricky Ray around. We know what happened with 21-point lead in the fourth quarter last week, let alone a seven-point lead, but dominated on the field by Montreal thus far. Scoreboard doesn't really reflect it. First down, Toronto, from the Argo four. A 
And the carry goes to Slayton. By Winston, Steve Slayton gets 12 and a huge run on first down. Yeah, Winston Venable knows he let that one get away. He broke the tackle. Venable, you, you see him right there in the middle of your screen. He's got to make this tackle. He knows it and he lets it go. His head is behind a ball carrier. Ball carrier is going to break that arm tackle 24-7. Slayton has no problem with that moving the chains. Again on first down, Ray wanted to go deep for Owens, goes underneath instead to Woodson, a flag is down as Woodson gets brought down at the 24-yard line, a couple of yards short of a first down, pending the flag. Jonathan Bowman's telling it, telling everybody in the stadium where that, where that flag is and what it's all about. And the Argonauts are moving back, so another costly penalty. It's a holding call against the Argonauts. Now, do you accept the penalty or not? They're taking the yardage. Holding, Toronto number 66. Half the distance to the goal here. Repeat first down. Holding call against Sir Vincent Rogers. They have Sir Vincent Rogers on the edge, gets beat on the inside, and then has to grab a cloth or a handful, gets caught. So now the Argonauts are back to their 10 yard, back inside their 10 yard line, first down from the eight. Yeah, I knew that ball wasn't spotted right the first time. I'm thinking that's about half the distance. There's no yeah. such thing as an eight-yard penalty. <laughs> now Ray on the goal line throws. And the catch is made by Slayton, but nothing doing there. Maybe a loss of the play as Bear Woods got in quickly. Winston Venable there. Winston he was Venable not, as well. He was not going to let it let him get away this time. Winston Venable's dad, Max, a former Mundle from a long time ago. Yeah, and this is what Ricky Ray's looking at. He's got to hold the ball. Usually ball's out now. We start, you see Ricky Ray go left to right, pull the ball down, move his feet in the pocket to his right, and then dump it down. You know that the defense has got him confused. Pre-snap recognition is easy for a quarterback, and when that happens, good things happen. When you confuse them, defense has the upper hand. Actually, Markin has a gain of two on the play. Second and long. Rays under pressure from Bowman throws. And the pass is caught by Mike Bradwell, but Bradwell brought down at the 15-yard line, a gain of six. This will be close to an Argo first down, but or check that's right, the original line of scrimmage. So the Argos left to punt. That's right, they got. The they got that eight-yard penalty. Massive eight-yard penalty. That's right. But, Gore, I tell you, this is an outstanding job of defensive execution by the Alouettes. They're confusing a veteran quarterback who often makes defenses look silly. They've got Ricky Ray confused. Well, that was almost blocked by Montreal's J.C. Beaulieu. And now Rainey from midfield has a seam and gets down to the 46-yard line. So, again, the Alouettes will start this possession on the Argo side of midfield. Can they make something happen here with two and a half to go in the third quarter? And here's the comparison we talked about. The first eight games, minus nine in the giveaway takeaway. That's turnovers, plus 11 since. Yeah, that's huge right there. That's really huge. And completion percentage. Yeah, it was. Percent. And of course, this week, Matt, the Alouettes released Troy Smith, who was their starter in the first part of the season. That wasn't going to happen. With that quarterback, they felt Jonathan Crompton gave him a spark, and he certainly has the last six weeks. On first down, Sutton fights his way ahead for a couple. The last three Alouette drives have started at the Toronto 40, the Toronto 35, and the Toronto 47. And they got to take advantage of it. That's great field position, and you got to put points in the board because Ricky Ray is capable of getting hot in a heartbeat. I'd expect them to change things up offensively next series, maybe go a no huddle, get some tempo and some rhythm back because they have none of that right now. But here's Montreal. This is a huge drive putting points on the board. Now Crompton in and throws, and the pass is caught. And moving the sticks ahead is Rainey for the Alouettes, a gain of eight. He looked like a running back in space there, didn't he? Caught the hit screen already kind of like a hitch out there. And the ball was a little late, but eventually Crompton found him. Ryan Dinwiddie 
spreading his playmakers. I like that. Chris Rainey at wide receiver to the short side and a little hitch route. You give it to him, and he makes three guys miss moving the chains. Ryan Dinwiddie's come a long way this season with the responsibility to his lap when they let Rick Warman go nine days into training camp. Rick, Ryan Dinwiddie, fine job this season. And now Crompton looking to the end zone for S.J. Green. Green dives and makes the catch. He's got it down to the three-yard line. S.J. Green leaps a gain of 32, and the Alouettes have first and goal at the Toronto three. This is this is six foot three against five foot six, and this is a mismatch. Get the ball out with timing. That's what he does on this play here. You can see Suber doesn't have a chance to look back and make a play in the football. The ball spotted. Nicely this time, but with great timing, the big receiver, S.J. Green, can go up and get it at this highest point. Time winding down here in the third quarter. The Alouettes have the ball. At the draw of three, and Tanner Marsh is in a quarterback with a short yardage team. Play fake. Marsh goes a hit. <laughs> no call for the official yet. That reminds me of a play we used to run, Gordon. Is a play fake. Uh-oh. And you've got an injured Alouette. Yeah. Looks like Josh Bork is shaken up. I'll check that. It's Luke Bruder Jordan, the center. And he's out to the 15-yard line injured. So with it, with, if he goes down, it looks like he's walking it off. But Christian Matt will go to center. And Ryan White will go to left guard. That's what you'll see here in the continuation of this drive. And it'll be first or second and goal from the one-yard line. When we come back for the fourth quarter last week, the Argonauts pulled off an amazing comeback in the fourth. And they may be down even more here when we come back.